Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for another installment of experimenting with my cargo SSDO. Yes, this is the slightly improved version. If you saw the last video, I tried to take this to Eve, and it got to Eve, it just kind of didn't get very deep into Eve's atmosphere, because Eve is a bastard and has a very thick, deadly atmosphere. Um, but yeah, today I'm taking it to Duna. I think it might work better on Duna, because Duna has a much more forgiving atmosphere, although it's quite thin, so it's not particularly good for planes, but this has pretty big wings. It was designed with big wings so it could do this sort of thing, also just big wings help with f flying, which is good, because it is indeed a plane. But yeah, this has been uh, had its asteroid lab stripped out because it's no longer used for picking up asteroids. Although I reckon if I found a small enough asteroid, it could pick up and return an asteroid. Um, but yeah, uh, this is just going to head on. It's also had its uh, RCS systems fixed, so that it has the right amount of RCS thrusters on each side. It's also got air brakes and parachutes to help land on Duna, which may be very uh, difficult because drag on Duna is something that is a bit, well, a bit of a scarce resource, really, since it has such a thin atmosphere. But anyway, we've sped this up now. I haven't really edited anything. Well, I've edited a few things out of this, but it's mostly just sped up so you can kind of see the whole process um, of getting a, an SSTO to another planet. Because I, uh, I cut out quite a lot of uh, the last uh, episode, but you know. It's just quite interesting to see the exact process of doing this. So basically, yeah, you just want to kind of slowly uh, tip more towards the horizon as you get up to towards 20 kilometers where you will be getting your kind of maximum efficiency and thrust. Um, well, not maximum thrust, but kind of maximum efficiency on your thrust. Uh, and here I'm firing up my nuclear engines. Probably a little bit early because I'm still getting a huge amount of thrust from these jet engines, but um, yeah. But I, f I fired them up anyway, just cause. I'm gonna have a quick sip of pink lemonade because uh, my I'm rather parched. Hmm. Yeah, I've been um. Yeah, weirdly, weirdly parched recently. A bit of a, a dry mouth. But anyway, we've switched over to rocket fuel, um, through our multi-mode rapier engines, and we're gonna push our apoapsis out of the atmosphere, and then just pretty much cruise up and try to use uh, just the nuclear engines, really. Uh, I've actually used a little more fuel there than last time. It wasn't particularly efficient, but I don't think it should be a massive problem, because I should be able to aerobrick more effectively on Duna, because Duna is quite a... Um Quite of a, has quite a forgiving atmosphere, so you can do some pretty uh, hardcore aero braking, and you won't burn up quite so much. It also has a pretty heavy moon, um, Ike, which is about the third mass of uh, Duna, I believe, which uh, might allow me to do some sort of gravity assist uh, to slow myself down. Anyway, yeah, just push ourselves into orbit all the way. I'm getting quite close to that apoapsis, and these nuclear engines aren't providing a huge amount of thrust, so I may burn off the rest of that oxidizer. Yeah, you can see I just fired up the engines a little bit there to give me a little more of a kick. Um, it would be nice to leave a little oxidizer in there, just in case I need a very high thrust maneuver. Although the en the nuclear engines work very well on Duna, so um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Anyway, there we are in orbit. Uh, skipping ahead, though, to where I have planned my maneuver, I had to warp forward about two years because we were in exact wrong place to go to Duna when I uh, launched this. So, yeah, warping forward a little bit until our... Um, uh, uh, we're at a, the right angle with Duna. Uh, you can find out the um, the angles to get to other planets, kind of the phase angles between you and the other planet, using a site called ksp.olex.biz, which has been around for a very long time and is a very useful tool. It'll just do a lot of the calculations you need to know. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm going to do this uh, escape burn with uh, two passes, as was last time. This is my first one. I burn off a fair amount of Delta V, and then... Um, Cut the engines after about a four minute burn and then warp round, replan the maneuver, and head right back on to Duna. Just finish off the pink lemonade. Anyway, uh, <laughs> there's just uh, replanning it. Getting my encounter, I can tweak that all later when I'm um, out around the sun. Looks like there's a bit of uh, audio, uh, a bit of video ghosting there, but I, maybe it won't be there. Um, wait, maybe it won't be in the final video, but it looked a bit uh, flaky, but it seems fine now. Anyway. You may have just seen, there's actually a small wing on the, yeah, you can see that on the uh, bottom of the spacecraft. Uh, that's actually used to keep it aerodynamically stable when it's empty of fuel, because I had a problem before where it was actually aerodynamically unstable when it was very low on fuel, which it will be when it gets to Duna. So I needed to uh, move the center of lift back. And I thought that might just be a fairly simple, nice uh, kind of a tool and I use kind of lifting plates on the bottom of planes on fighter jets often so I just applied that to this yes you do learn a lot about planes when you're trying to make something that will out maneuver and out dogfight another plane it is quite a useful skill anyway we are almost finishing off our burn 
And uh, yeah, heading on to Duna. Obviously it's sped up, so this did take quite a lot longer in real time, but it was surprisingly... I thought it would take be horrible with two nuclear engines and a giant plane, but it wasn't that bad because I've burned off most of my fuel, which is where most of my mass lies. Anyway, I just need to tweak that, um, uh, tweak my orbit here. You can see I'm just... Uh, making a quick fine-tune, a plane change, a uh, retrograde burn, and just pull myself in nice and close to Duna so I can take maximum use out of the Oberth effect around Duna to slow myself down, therefore saving Delta V. I'm going to do a fairly simple thing where I capture myself using my engines and then aero brake and possibly gravity assist using Ike because it has a significant mass so I can use it to move me around in the uh, way I want. Anyway, just a very small plane change. The one to get to Eve was about... 300 meters a second, this was 14, um, so it is actually uh, far easier to go to Aduna in terms of Delta V, just because the plane change is, um, it's, it's yeah, Kerbin and Duna are far more aligned, and you can do your plane change much further away from the sun, um, whereas with Eve, uh, you have to do it much closer to the sun, and you want to be far away from your parent body while doing your plane change. A little bit of science, uh, well, not really science, just pro tip. Let's call it a pro tip. Anyway, here we are, heading up to Duna, and let's uh, drop down there and do my uh, my capture burn. Uh, I still have a significant amount of fuel, not too much. I think I had more when I got to Eve, but uh, doesn't really matter. It's much easier to do things on Duna. And yeah, I yeah. So let's uh, slow ourselves down, capture ourselves a little bit. I am going to do a relatively hefty burn, just because I don't want to risk like tearing the aircraft apart when I uh, aero break. Um, even with, even in Duna's uh, tenuous atmosphere, it can be rather dangerous, and that's why I'm aero capturing rather. Oh no, well, that's why I'm capturing with my engines rather than performing an aero capture because um, I would be coming in very fast. Anyway, here I get an encounter with uh, Ike. I'm actually going to slow down quite a little, uh, quite a lot more, and then get an encounter uh, kind of here-ish, so that I can pull myself down. Yeah, you can see that's going to pull me down quite well. Um, so I'm just going to use RCS to tweak that, and that looks pretty good. Um, it'll slow me down. I'm going to do a quick burn around Ike so that I don't actually hit the planet, because you can see here I'm on a trajectory to hit Duna. So I'm going to do a relatively hefty uh, retrograde burn that will drop me inside the atmosphere so I can aero break the rest of it. But yeah, I've probably saved a little bit of Delta V. I'm not entirely sure how much, because I am having to do quite a serious burn here. But yeah, you can see that using um, uh, Ike to slow yourself down is actually not a particularly bad idea. Using the moon uh, when you're leaving Kerbin to get a gravity assist to go somewhere is usually very inefficient because uh, you'll have to tweak yourself and do a few extra burns. So that's inadvisable, but I um, often use uh, moons to slow down. So here we are, heading into the atmosphere for our aero braking run. Just basically trying to keep as much fuel around as possible is probably what you're gathering from this, you know? Ike, um, gravity assists and aero braking and all of that. And when you have big wings, you might as well do uh, aero brake. Maneuver. Now, this is actually uh, quite a lot more, um, quite a lot more aggressive aero braking maneuver than I intended. So I flip over engines first. Partly um, my plan, partly aerodynamics. Uh, so that reduces my drag, and I uh, come right out of the atmosphere because I was uh, aero braking very hard there because I am quite deep in the atmosphere. But it wasn't particularly deadly, so it went rather well. But yeah, that really did uh, save me quite a lot of fuel, and I'm going to go in for a slightly less aggressive aero braking run this time. Um, full wings at the ready again and hopefully bring myself down to a relatively uh, relatively good orbit and then probably finish it off with engines. And I would actually very much like to land um, on the on the bit of uh, Duna that's in the day right now because I know it to be quite flat. Uh, you can't see it particularly well now but there's a kind of darker patch of Duna which is a crater which is actually quite flat so it will be quite nice to land there. Anyway yeah so I'm going to do a final tweak there. It's probably going to be quite a hefty burn but I don't mind too much. I have a lot of fuel left and um, a lot of engine. A lot of a lot of efficiency in my engines. A lot of engine. I do have a lot of engines, but I only want to use two of them. So yeah, let's just uh, pull myself down here. Um, use it. It's a radial and retrograde burn. It'll move my orbit in the exact way I want it to, which is rather nice. Um, when you burn towards the planet, uh, it'll lower your uh, the apoapsis and raise your periapsis. Well. Uh, Depending on where you're heading towards, if you're heading towards your periapsis, it'll lower your periapsis and raise your apoapsis. Anyway, yeah, we've dropped inside the atmosphere now, and we're preparing for atmospheric entry, where nothing goes wrong at all. Uh, <laughs> but you'll see all of that. Anyway, so, 
Uh, let's uh, there we get a nice Ike rise. It is at night. I'm just quickly rebalancing all of the fuel because um, I really don't want to flip out because that would be terrible. Uh, you don't want to flip your plane around while trying to control it, basically. So I'm just uh, balancing out the fuel. Um, but it is a very stable aircraft now because it doesn't need to pitch particularly hard. Although it would be nice to in Duna's uh, tenuous atmosphere because like, you can't get much purchase in. Uh, the atmosphere with your control surfaces, but yeah. Anyway, I will be landing on the light side as you can see, and the sunrise is coming pretty soon. There we go, there's a nice sunrise. I'm just checking things, I guess, checking uh, all my fuel is balanced properly. And uh, now it's time for descent. Luckily I did bring air brakes this time. Um, you can see I'm try just trying to glide slightly. I want to land on uh, in that uh, darker bit of Duna, the uh, sort of crater, so what I was doing there was uh, lifting up my, yeah, that's what I'm doing here, is lifting up my apoapsis slightly. I'm gliding in the high atmosphere to try and pull myself all, uh, across Duna quite nicely so I don't um, come down on the ridge, which will be much higher in the atmosphere, which will mean it'll be much harder to glide. I want to be very low down near sea level and preferably on flat-ish ground, which I believe this crater is. Um, so yeah, we're starting to pick up a few flames now as I'm just kind of diving rather than trying to glide because I'm on the right trajectory. Deploying my air brakes to make sure I'm uh, going slow enough by the time I get down there. Uh, slowing down on Duna is a bit of an ordeal and it does take quite a while, but um, you know, you just bring the right equipment. Um, and I do have parachutes for landing, although uh, if I pull all four it'll actually cause me to pitch forward, which is absolutely not what I want, so if I just pull the top ones it should be much better. It took me a while to figure that out while flying, I was like, oh god, which ones should I pull? Because I was trying to like do like pivots in my head and it just wouldn't make sense for some reason, but if you slow down the top of the spacecraft, uh, well, slow down the top of the plane, it'll uh, pull up. Anyway, uh, what you're about to see is me uh, lay down um, a quick save, uh, because, well, there is a quick load after it because uh, on my first attempt of landing, this happened. You saw the quick save there so that I didn't have to have that as my final thing. So yeah. Anyway, let's just continue gliding after a quick quick save. Yes, I didn't get this the first try. Did you really expect me to? Anyway, to pro blowing the air brakes to ble bleed off some more velocity so don't get that situation again. And you're about to see me uh, quick save and quick load again because on my second attempt at landing, this happened. Um, yeah, it was looking actually all right, but then it kind of, the parachutes fucked me up and I crashed. That was better, but yeah. Anyway, so, let's see the real attempt. It's my real attempt at landing, and uh, yeah, just coming down, I'm trying to bleed off quite a lot of velocity. I'd like, you can't slow down too much because there's not enough atmosphere to glide at really low speeds, but you can't come in too fast because you can't land too fast. I've activated the RCS systems now so that I get a little more um, pitch authority because I was having a pretty serious issue trying to pitch in the very thin atmosphere. You just can't gain any purchase um, in Duna's atmosphere, really. Uh, because it's so freaking thin. Mars's atmosphere actually is uh, about 1% of the density of Earth's atmosphere. I'm not, I think Duna is a little thicker than that, otherwise it would be really, really hard. Um, and that's actually why the uh, the storm in the Martian wouldn't have actually knocked out, knocked over Mark Watney. He would have been fine in that storm. And they wouldn't have had to leave because the Mav would have been fine. But Andy Weir acknowledges that, and he did that on purpose because he was t telling a story, not writing a um, science fact book. Because it would be rather boring if it started and there's there's a big storm. It's Mars. It's fine. All right, let's just carry on and then end the fin. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so we're dropping down now. We're actually uh, doing pretty well with pitch and things. I'm slowing down with all my might now because I don't want to land too hard. I'm even using RCS to slow me down. Uh, and there go the shoots, and we touch down pretty well, and then pitch up. And I thought I was about to die, but then quickly thought that I should fire up the nuclear engines so that I could, um, you know, maintain my velocity and touch down gently. Uh, there we go. Yeah, we are down. Oh yeah, HyperEdit is still installed. Yeah, HyperEdit is there because um, I actually did test this before I tried with a, mission, with a plane I already had. Um, so there is about half a plane somewhere in uh, on Duna. I think it might be in a different save, but I wanted to make sure it was possible before I tried. So that's why HyperEdit is there. But anyway, um, there we are. Landed on Duna. Rather beautifully, I think. That went well, so a plane can work on Duna quite well. So yeah, I'm just going to quick save there, but we're pitching back a bit. Um, so I'm just using the reaction control system to uh, put myself in the right place, and then I'm probably going to move myself onto a slightly less steep uh, 
slope because I don't want to pitch back so much. Yeah, that's, so that's just fire up the nuclear engines. The rapiers are basically useless at this point. I mean, yes, they do uh, provide a lot of rocket thrust, but obviously there's no oxygen in the um, Dunian atmosphere, so we can't combust jet fuel, so they're a bit uh, a bit superfluous. I do like the uh, way I've done that at the back, where you kind of have these four um, rockets on kind of tail, uh, uh, tail pieces. I think that looks kind of, well, a bit janky, but I do quite like it. Anyway, let's just park ourselves up somewhere slightly more sedate, and... Uh, get out and plant a flag, I guess. But yes, it is possible to do something cool with this SSTO. Maybe I'll take it to lathe next if it's possible. I know I can get at least 15 tons to orbit, so if I just made that fuel, um, then I could probably get to lathe. Uh, 15 tons to low carbon orbit, that is. Anyway, so let's drop down our pilot and uh, land on Duna. The RCS pack just about works on Duna, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's just... Uh, Head over uh, here, away from the plane, just in case we ever decide to take off. I guess we could explore. I should have really bought a drill, but I'd also have to bring a refinery and uh, ore tank and stuff. But I still could have totally um, refueled and gone home. Maybe I'll try that next time. Anyway, there's our flag. Um, we're going home, right? No. No, you're not. You're staying here. You better get used to it. That's the problem with going to Mars right now, is it would be kind of boring. Although I actually often think that if I could just take my computer to Mars and could just sit around and write code and do YouTube. I'd be very happy. I wouldn't have to deal with stupid people and I could just I could just sit for a I like sitting and thinking. I think Mars would be great for me. <laughs> anyway, so we've got all four Kerbals out. They're all looking very happy about the prospect of never going home. And they're going to pose for a beauty shot, which is probably going to be the thumbnail because let's face it, that looks pretty cool. But anyway, that is the end of the uh, video. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope uh, you enjoyed these kind of crazy uh, invention shenanigans. I love doing these and I would love to do more. So yes, I hope you enjoyed this. This has been Chaos with Tape. I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.